You can also add curve shapes to your output window using the ellipse and arc draw commands. An ellipse is drawn using an XY coordinate as a center with a horizontal and vertical radius. Here I have an ellipse with a center at X and Y, an X radius which represents the horizontal radius of the ellipse, and a Y radius which represents the vertical distance of the ellipse from the center. Again, the line width represents the thickness of the exterior line around the ellipse, the color as usual, and the transp transparency as 0 or 1. You can also fill in the ellipse by using the fill ellipse command. Let's go back to our program and draw an ellipse, keeping in mind the size of our output window. So if our output window is 800 by 600, we want to make sure that we're drawing our ellipse so that either part of it is off the screen or the whole thing is on the screen. I'm going to start by drawing an ellipse at 100 by 200 with a horizontal radius of 50 and a vertical radius of 100. My line width will be 10, my color is when we haven't used, let's try cyan, and a transparency of 1. So when I run this program, you should be able to see an ellipse with a, a border thickness of 10. Okay, so it has a smaller horizontal radius than it does vertical radius. I can also draw a fill ellipse. I'll draw that on the opposite side of the screen with a larger horizontal radius than a vertical radius this time. And a nice yellow color. So if I run this, I should have a second ellipse except filled in with the color yellow. And I do. An arc represents only part of an ellipse, which is determined by its starting angle and the angle extent, which is how far from the start angle you wish the arc to extend. An arc will look something like this, where it has a center at x, y, an x and y radius, just the same as the ellipse, except its start angle, which would be very similar to a Cartesian coordinate system and based on the center. The angle extent would go from that very first start angle and run until it reaches how far you want that angle to extend. An example of this might be having a start angle that is equal to 30 degrees, but running for an extent of, let's say, 90 degrees. Or maybe this is about 80 degrees. So from 30 degrees, the arc will run until it has traveled or drawn another 80 degrees and landed or finished at that point there. So that this angle in here is 80 degrees. Returning to our program, let's draw some arcs. So the first arc I'm going to draw will start with a, a center of 200 by 100 from the top left with, let's do a, a horizontal radius of 100 and a vertical radius of 100. So it would, if this was an ellipse, it would trace out a circle that has a horizontal and vertical radius of 100 each. But in our case, we're going to start it with an angle of 45 degrees and we'll run for 90 degrees. So that means it'll start at 45 degrees, draw the arc until it has drawn a full 90 degrees. Now the arc type has three different types. You can do arc 2D, dot, pi, chord, or open. Let's start with pi. It's best to see these in action to see what the difference is for each one. Now pi would trace out exactly like it sounds like. It's like a piece of pi. It draws the arc, but also closes in the other sides by connecting to the center. Now the line width will make 10. The color, we'll use our helper, make it red. The 
this shows a pi arc. So you can see that it draws from a 45 degree angle for 90 degrees, so it would run out until 135 degrees. And this would then fill in that arc with the color red, since I've chosen pi. Now this arc appears as though it's filled in because I chose a line width that was too large. Let's go back to 10. Run this program. There we go. So with a line width of 10, the pi shaped arc is no longer filled in, but you can see that it connects the line back to the center of the arc and sweeps out from 45 degrees out 90 degrees. In order to see the difference between the three arc types, I'm going to draw three arcs, all the same color, but we'll move with them over so that we can see the difference. So they'll be all the same vertical level, all the same arc, same angle, except we'll take a look at what the difference is between pi, chord, and open. The one on the left will be the pi, which we're familiar with. A chord draws the arc from beginning angle to the end and then connects the line straight across. And then the open one just draws the outside of the arc. It does not connect any lines on the inside. If we make our angle of extent larger, let's say maybe 200, you can see what effect that has on our arc. So then you can see a much larger arc and you can see where the connections are. So this connects, the pi one connects right back to the center, cord goes straight across and open remains open between the two ends. You can do the same thing with a fill ellipse. Let's also draw, sorry, the fill arc. Let's also draw three of these. Now remember a fill does not require a line width, so we'll remove the line width, and I think we'll also change the color. Let's go with yellow. Right now, these are at the exact same x and y coordinates as the others, so I'm going to move them down the screen. vertically and let's change the angle so from 45 let's go and with an extent of 270 if I run this program now I'm gonna have some fill ellipses underneath my regular or my fill arcs underneath my regular arcs above there we go so you can actually see that the pi will create a pac-man the chord sort of creates the pac-man but it looks like his face has been smushed and then with open, because it's a fill ellipse, it fills in the space inside, or sorry, a fill arc, it fills in that space inside, I keep saying ellipse, but this is an arc, so uh, a chord and open fill arc look very much the same because of the way the fill command works, but there you can see the difference between all three.